My name is Lucy Leonard. I'm an occupational therapist and I work with the OT service. And this section is about posture and bathing. So if somebody has really complex postural needs, sometimes the go-to solution is showering and a shower chair. And certainly with a, the use of a shower chair in a level access shower, for example, there are multiple ways that you can address somebody's postural needs. So for example, you could have a tilt in space shower chair, you could have lateral supports and maybe a pommel. And that's great. And that's a really good way of addressing somebody's um, bathing needs. But just consider for a moment that bathing isn't just about having a wash. And maybe that's not the only reason why we choose to bathe. There are multiple reasons for wanting to and needing to access a bath. So think about things like pain management. A bath is a really good way to have a soak and to address some of those pain issues that can't always be addressed with medication. Sometimes people access the bath to relieve contractures as well, especially people with cerebral palsy. I've found that Anecdotally, um, people have fed back to me that relaxing in a bath really helps to reduce the amount of contractures that somebody is experiencing. And also the relaxation, just the general sense of feeling relaxed is a reason why we access the bath. And also think about the sensory stimulation that people can benefit from being immersed in warm water and all the benefits that that comes with. Certainly when working with children, I found that the aspect of play and being in the bath is a huge thing for children and something that's really important for parents as well, for them to be able to bathe their children, maybe as they do with their other siblings. That's a really important reason for, for bathing. And also some skin conditions that people have can be relieved through the use of being absorbed in, in water and emollients being used in the bath. So when thinking about posture and bathing, it's important to think about not just finding a solution to struggling with posture, but looking at the reasons why somebody needs to bathe. The correct posture during bathing can induce relaxation, which can aid sleep when used as part of a bedtime routine. So if a person's ability to participate in the occupation of bathing is more than just about washing, we need to think about how posture can be supported in the bath. So we really need to get a really good understanding of the diagnosis of the individual. There are three systems of the body which affect posture. Firstly, the nervous system. So that's everything to do with the nerves, including the brain. And diagnoses affecting this posture could be something like acquired brain injury, um, a stroke, a spinal injury or cerebral palsy. The skeletal systems also key in the effect it has on posture and diagnosis that affect the skeletal system could be things like Gorham's disease, brittle bones disease, kyphosis and then we need to consider the muscular system. So diagnosis that affect the neuromuscular system include things like motor neuron disease, multiple sclerosis and supranuclear palsy. So when we're looking at somebody and we're looking at their posture within the bath we need to think about behavioural issues. So can they be unpredictable in their behaviour? Can they have challenging behaviour? And we need to look at how these can be managed. Is somebody frightened of the bath or the shower? These things are really important and can affect posture. Then we need to think about the sensory impairments. How do they react to water? How do they react to noise and the lighting? Especially in bathrooms, sometimes it can be quite an echoey environment and that can provide a little bit of sensory feedback. So we need to consider these things. If somebody's startled, it can make them adopt really um, not very effective postures and can affect their um, overall well-being. So that needs to be taken into consideration. And then what's really important is seizures. So does anybody have any seizures? What type of seizures do they have? How frequent do they have them? And are they well managed? Seizures do not mean that somebody cannot use a bath. There are specialists of baths available with a platform that can lift somebody out of the water safely if they were to have a seizure. So there are several different ways that we can support somebody's posture within a bath. Now, we, sometimes we think about bath lifts and using bath lifts in a bath, and these are great, but sometimes they don't have the flexibility to support complex postural needs, and they may not allow 
the full benefits of a bath to be afforded. So, for example, sometimes with a bath lift, it's very difficult to fully lie down or even allow eye contact during the bath. And that sometimes affects communication between the carer and the person using the bath. Flotation devices are available. They sometimes fit around somebody's head and shoulders and allow them to keep their face out of the water. This can allow the user to essentially float within the water and negate the effects of gravity. It can create a really calming environment for the user as the feeling of weightlessness is experienced when floating. Other bath supports can be used, such as moulds that fit to a user's body and air is pumped out of the chair. The, the air can be amended and added or removed to suit the user. Some bath supports have a fabric cover and the back can be reclined within the bath to suit the user's comfort. And you can add pommels and head supports and lateral supports, and they could be added as necessary. So this can be really helpful to allow a tracheostomy to remain out of the water. Thank you.